Hey guys, the last game for round three of the Trans Tasman is on Sunday. The Highlanders versus the Rebels. Both teams they changed a couple. The Rebels actually less changes than you would have thought. After having two heavy defeats, you might have thought they would have made more changes. The Highlanders, they made two changes in their front row. Coltman, the experienced uh, hooker, comes into their front row as well. Uh, with Dixon, he's on the bench, the co-captain for the side. De Groot, he comes in at number one, or De Groot at number one, joining Tukalai. So that's a very strong front row. And they are up against the Rebels, who has a front row that's very strong as well, in theory, in Orr and Yelov. But in the last couple of weeks, they have been struggling at scrum time. So let's see how they go this week around. Ulisi, the Wallaby hooker, he's also been in good form. Uh, despite how the team has been playing. Ross Haylet Petty, the experience number four, comes in for the Rebels. Uh, and Hosea, he continues at number five. He's been in good form. Pari Pari Parkinson at number four. He's brilliant for the Highlanders. Just look at that guy's work rate. Such a good player on the park. He's just everywhere. Dixon, he was good two rounds ago. I was actually quite surprised when he was uh, rested last week or on the bench last week. This week around, he gets a start again. He will want to continue on that form of a couple of weeks ago. Liotta at number six for the Rebels. He was at number four last week, so he's just moved uh, from four to six. They would not want to take him off of the park because he was quite a busy body last week. Frizzell, talk about a busy body on the park. He's probably one of the Highlanders' busiest players, one of their best players as well. He just does everything for them. Tackling, running with the ball, uh, hitting it up, taking it forward, giving good passes. He kicks every now and then and he scores a couple of tries. Then you have Lynches at number 7 playing his 50th game. Uh, Wells, he moves from 6 to 7. Nicerani, he's... Fr the Frizzell of the Rebels does the same thing for them. Very strong carrier. Uh, he would want to uh, front up against Frizzell in this one. Renton, he's also been in good form. Good to see that he continues. Joe Powell at number 9. He has a big task at hand to play against Aaron Smith, who's been in brilliant form this year. You can just see what the All Black can still do, even though he is older now. Carter Gordon, the youngster at number 10, continues. Last week, he managed the side quite well. Uh, up against Mitch Hunt, who can be very dangerous. He can find a lot of gaps for guys around him. He's quite quick as well. He's basically a fullback number 10 mix, so you get both of those uh, traits in him. Tumua at number 12. Last week, he moved from 10 to 12. Now he's there again. Let's see how he continues there. Last week, I did pick up that a lot of times he is in the 10 channel instead of the 12 channel. Uh, I mean, he does have a youngster at number 10, so a lot of times it is difficult to... Uh, let go of that control, especially for a playmaker like him. So uh, we'll see this week if he can let Gordon take control of the game a little bit more. He also hung a little bit too deep for a number 12. So the Rebels did have a lot of back football that made their wingers struggle with the ball. And the wingers of the Rebels this whole season have struggled to score tries. And that is one of the things that they just don't get front football then Gregory is at number 12, very big runner of the ball, big hitter as well. Collins at number 13 versus Magne, big number 13. Anderson comes in at number 14 for Callaway. Callaway is on the bench. Karabetti at number 11. He's just doing so much for the Rebels. You can see how much he works for the team, just not scoring tries, what the winger should be doing. Uh, but that's not his fault. The hot stepper, Nareki at 11, he can always have a, a good game. Most of the games he's quite quiet though, but if he has an in-form game, he's so dangerous. Tomkinson, the regular center, plays at number 14 again. Worth continues at number 15. I thought last week he did pretty well. And then Ioane, he's at number 15, the All Black. As always, I'm going to compare the benches to see how the game is going to be rounded out. Hansen, Gibbon, Sordoni, quite a good front row for the Rebels to finish off the game. The Highlanders, they have Dixon. Johnston and then Thwaites, so that's also a good uh, front row, both of them pretty even in my opinion. Steve Cummins versus Salby Rickett, Hardwick, Lomani. Lomani is actually playing scrum half this week, not winger. Uh, his regular position used to be scrum half, but this whole season he's been uh, kind of a winger for the team. So let's see how he continues now at scrum half, having not played there for basically a whole year. Callaway, the very dangerous uh, outside back, is also at number 23. And then Illy is at number 22. I think he was picked for Manu Samoa. I'm not sure now uh, if it was him. Then for the Highlanders, they have Imeno, the very strong running 
a Japanese player. I just want to see him play all the time. Would have loved to see him start as well. Hamilton, Punivai, and in Billy Harmon, another loose forward there. So the Highlanders go with a 6-2 split to win it with the forwards. Guys, the Rebels have had two big losses. None of these teams are playing at home. They are playing at Sydney. It would have been in New Zealand, in, Q in Queenstown, but unfortunately, due to COVID restrictions and travel restrictions, they are playing in Sydney. The Rebels have actually won the last two encounters between these two teams, but the Rebels have had two big defeats. Bookies have the Highlanders to win by 21. I'm going to go Highlanders to win it by 25. Let me know your prediction down in the comments below. Also, check out these videos next to me. Hit the subscribe button if you do like the channel. And then I'll see you for the next one. Cheers. Bye.